Hello, Dave, and welcome to our Head to Head show. Oh, mate, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, really looking forward to the weekend's game. So, uh, yeah, so I can't believe the uh, weekend's looming again. So, uh, yeah, here we yeah. go. Come around quick. <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, and obviously, Bournemouth and Brentford have faced each other many, many times over the years. So I'm sure it'll be a good encounter like the, the previous ones we've had over the years. Um, just to touch a little on the cup game um, Tuesday night. Um, how did the guys get on? Yeah, we just about squeezed ourselves past Newport. We went to uh, penalties and, uh, um, yeah, we won 3 nil on penalties, which it makes it look easy. But, yeah, I, I, it was we made hard work of it. Um, it's just, just good to get through to the to the next round, to be honest with you. But, you know, it was. I think Newport weren't weren't awful, but, you know, we should have been so much better than, than we were. So, yeah, we had to bring some of the players on that we probably didn't really want to bring on, and uh, they got us over the line. So, uh, yeah, yeah we, we lived to tell the tale. Tuesday night in Newport was quite interesting. So, uh, yeah. yeah, had a quite a late night. It was, it was all right. So, uh, yeah, it was like old the old days again, going to... Uh, you know, it was just like deja vu going to sort of, you know, Rodney Parade and, you know, mm. those kind of stadiums. You know, you kind of, you could not quickly forget, but, um, you know, you realise uh, uh, how how much better things are in the Premier League. Yeah, it makes you appreciate, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. does. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, we were in South Wales as well um, with uh, Swansea um, and uh, we didn't do... Uh, too great but for me it's all about building confidence at the minute um, with a new manager and a new signing so we managed to squeeze through 3-2 which I predicted on our previous head-to-head -head that we'd win 3 now. so at least I got the amount of goals we scored right anyway but um, um, on to on to Saturday's fixture um, if we first take a quick look at the um, two managers um, your manager seems to really quite fascinate me really um, He's he's not had the usual management background, has he? From what I can tell. Um, well, not not in the UK as such. No, but I mean, you know, he, he managed Bromby and he's and he's gone through the uh, you know the the Danish uh, international kind of youth ranks. He's, he's, he's managed, I think, every every youth level. Um, apart from the sort of like the head job, which you know, I think he'll he'll do at some stage in his career. So. Mm -hmm. He's not. He, he's he's not sort of come into the game and worked his way up through the leagues. But um, uh, he, he's 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 an incredible guy. Yeah, we've been fortunate enough to have him on the podcast a couple of times. He contributed to my recent book. Um, wow. He's he's a proper he's a proper um, football academic. Um, um, he's he's kind of really intense. Uh, he, yeah, it's, I think with his long floppy hair, he kind of gives a different impression. But he's 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 a he's a he's a he's a you know a very knowledgeable tactician, and he's he's proven himself um, every season at this level to kind of outthink quite a lot of those you know those managers that we would say that are kind of done. You know, they're they're big name managers. You know, we he, he out peps twice last year. We beat, yeah. we beat we beat Liverpool at our place. Um, you know, we, we we smashed Man United by playing the, the perfect setup against them that day. You know, the, the, it's not coincidence. It's not fluke. You know, he's 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 the real deal. Um, we're lucky to have him. Yeah. So from the stuff I've read, is you know they big him up as some sort of you know philosopher, some sort of professor. Is it all down to that, or is he generally just a good coach on the coaching field? I mean, he's a bit, a bit of everything, you know. He, he, he's. I mean, I, w I wouldn't call him a philosopher, but um, you know, he, he is. He is a, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a wise, experienced tactician. Um, he, he, you know, he, he, he talks formations, and he, and, and he's, he's, he's very fluent at, at that side of it. He's, he's just a genuinely nice guy as well. So he's. He's he's built up relationships and earned trust from the players, and they 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 all respond to him. Um, you know, it's 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 no coincidence that you know it's a, it's a very tight ship, and he he's kind of like a you know I wouldn't say father figure necessarily because he's not he's not that old, but he's you know he's 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 earned the trust of of a young squad, and um, you know they will they will they'll run through they run through walls for him. So it's you know it, it, it's, it's the Danish style. You know we're we're very very Danish, Danish centric, you know. There's there's been a lot of players, um, obviously, you know, Thomas, and then his his last assistant was was Danish, 
um, and the word Coromon as well. So uh, yeah, it's 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 part of that Danish psyche where they're just calm, measured, and um, really down to earth. So, in terms of of his record this season, obviously you know you've got two wins and a, no one win and, and two draws, obviously unbeaten. Where where would you say he he ranks in in terms of Premier League managers? Well, I mean, I think he could go into any of the top clubs, and you know, you might get the chance at some stage. Um, uh, you know, I, I guess he's not got a big European club on his CV, which which you know, which they they tend to look for. But um, you know, Postecoglou at, um, at at Tottenham, he he, had, he didn't have that. You know, or, you know, I guess you can call Celtic a big European club, but you know, for me, um, they're a Championship club um so you know that's that's you know that's i don't think that's you know i think i don't think that's like too much of a dig at them i, I just think the quality of the the spl is is kind of like you know really not what <laughs> not what it is in the prayer and you know and um thomas frank has his this is his third season here um and he doesn't show any signs of you know <laughs> the bubble bursting um he seems to be getting um, he seems to be getting stronger and it's just we need to obviously back that up in the transfer market now um, and uh, you know there's, there's talk of some of our players going which we'll probably talk about in a bit but you know there's, there's money there to go out and spend and um, you know he's part of that decision making process so yeah he's, 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 a, he's, he's, a, he's got a bright star in the sky you know he's you know I, I think he's like unfancied as it were by you know the media and you know the the stereotypical what you need to be a big big name manager he's not moody he's not salt he's not sulky doesn't do the mind games really um he's just a nice bloke and sometimes you know the nice blokes don't get taken as seriously as the idiots and uh, there's a lot yeah. of, a lot of managers that are idiots and they they seem to be like held in a, a much higher bar than thomas so you know yeah. i i don't think he cares he won't lose sleep over us you know he's, he's just uh you know he's just enjoying himself yeah um, so obviously we're talking about the game Saturday, but in terms of the, the season as a whole, what do you think Brentford can achieve this season? Uh, so far, I mean, I went out onto the American tour as well, pre-season. So we played, we played Fulham, um, we played, um, we played, uh, Aston Villa and we played Brighton. So we had three really strong, um, matches in the build up to the season. We, we didn't win any of those, but we looked, we looked really strong. Um, you know, we, we, we you know, they, they couldn't actually be three tougher games because, you know, they were all televised. They were taken very seriously and there was big crowds. Um, so we had a strong test to, to start with. And we, I think we come through that pretty well. Then we had a friendly against Lille, um, who were ranked like one place above us in the, like the World Justice League. So we had 20th and they were 19th. Um, and that's that's a barometer that our owners use to kind of work out the merits and the kind of like the the the, the, the placement of a of a team. Um, so that was a, a very well chosen and deliberately chosen um, uh, metric to to pick an opposition f for our you know the game before the season started. Um, draw against Tottenham on the opening day, which we were winning. So you know I, I think you take that and it's in the Tottenham start to the season been pretty strong um and then we absolutely demolished fulham at the cottage which was great because we can't stand fulham um and then um the crystal palace match last saturday which was a bit of a disappointment to be honest with you because i think we've been you know we kind of got not a little bit overexcited, but i think the fulham match was 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 really dominant and we looked really classy and we didn't quite reach those those levels again and then obviously last night in the in the league cup not that you could take too much for granted but you know we're still unbeaten um and you know you know as much as anyone else you know every point is is vital so you know if we're if we're if we, we, I, don't, we, I don't think we will be at the wrong end of the, the division but you know we're we're a, a tenth of the way through our points total to survive already so you know if it if it does come to that we're you know a point's great yeah definitely um in terms of our guy i don't know if you know much about um and donny eviola um, i don't know i know i'll be a liar if i said i knew a lot about him yeah um he's very very different to our previous manager obviously you would have seen the games last season with um 
Gary O'Neill. Um, he's a very, very attacking minded manager. Um, he likes to hit teams on the break. Um, he's kind of got that mentality where, you know, we're going to concede, but we can score more than the opposition. Um, and he's also a very underdog manager um, with his previous club. Um, he managed to get results against Barcelona and Real Madrid, and he got two cup semi finals with them. He's had a little bit of experience um, in uh, the Europa League in the qualifying stages. Um, so that's a little bit on his history. He's also from the Basque area of Spain, um, which has groomed managers like um, M, uh, Yuri Emery, um, Mikel Arteta. So he, he's been coached by the same coaches as them. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of his of his background. Um, but for us, in terms of um, form this season, um, it's like he has said himself, the first sort of several games of the season will still be a little bit like pre-season where he's trying to get his philosophy across. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, there's a lot of good individual performances at the moment. It's just more like gelling as a team. Um, we probably should have got the win against West Ham in all fairness. Um, Tottenham, to be fair, looked very, very good last Saturday. Um very good. They run rings around our defence, to be fair. Um, and at Liverpool, well, we were possibly could have been 2 0 up within the first five minutes, but there's a lot of um there's a lot of promise there with our with our new manager. It's just I think a time for us to sort of gel and, and get the uh the injured players back in, the new signings that are injured sort of integrated in, and hopefully we can kick on from there. Um just want to ask a, a question. I know you, you know you Brentford fans are probably fed up with hearing about it. To be fair, and I would be if I was in your shoes as well. But um, how's life going without Mister Tony at the moment? Uh, it was going all right until Saturday. Um, you know, it, I, it's kind of like it's not the elephant in the room because we, we you know we 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 do talk about it a lot. You know, we're we're not happy about it. Let's, let's be let's be brutally frank. And um, last week was a quite a big week for Ivan because he did that Diary of a CEO um, podcast, which kind of caused a lot of ripples because he, yeah. um, he 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 hasn't he hasn't taken um, he hasn't taken kind of like responsibility for the fact that he's unavailable really for <laughs> half a season for us. Um, we're paying his wages still. Um, you know, if he if he was if he was uh, if he was a reserve player who'd been kicked out, I'm sure, but um, he's, he's he's too valuable, so we have to we have to look after him, and he kind of knows that. Um, so I think fan, fans are just kind of a little bit. If he did, there's, he's never apologised um, from far, you know, and it's it's it, yeah, it's, it's just a, it's just a really odd one because we just we are going to miss him this season and then you know obviously the first two games we, we've done all right and we actually have done all right without him um whenever he's not played but would we do better with him and that's that's the thing we haven't we haven't lost the game without him in the premier league um but would we have won the games that we did win without him more by more that's 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 the, that's where we're at so yeah but we're, we're not a one one uh player club we're not um gonna sort of stand in his way when he inevitably will go which you know uh, the sooner the better to be honest with you because it's, it's, it's too much of a distraction i mean i love i love for him to to you know I, I, as a player he's brilliant i love you know he's he's been part you know a big part of our rise from the championship and the reason we've done so well and you know he's 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 a, such a quality player and He's so hard working, and he, he, he he's, he's he's I haven't got a, I've got so many superlatives for him, so I'm not knocking him as a player, and I'm not really knocking him full stop, but it's just an odd situation, and I don't think he's helped himself by speaking to that podcast last week, and he signed a um, signed with a new agency as well last week um, in Cannes. He flew out there, and um, you know he's not. I don't think he's signed that for that agency to to renew his contract with us. It's all it's all geared around uh, his move, um, and it's it's you know it's there will be a bum fight over him. I don't I don't think any of this is actually is affected his value um, because he is he is that good, um, and he will score goals um, when he comes back. But I think there's we might see him again in a Brentford shirt for one game, but I, I don't think we will. I think he'll be sold. 
um, next next close season or even in January um, when he when he when he's back, you know. So it's uh, he's, he's back in training with us um, midway through September, I believe, and then he's um, he's available for selection right at the end of January 2024. So um, yeah. So it, it is it is a distraction, um, and we need we do need closure on it, and we do need a hundred million quid for him as well because he's 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 probably that good. Right. Okay. Um, it, so obviously we touched on the agency he's obviously signed up with, which has obviously seen moves for Gareth Bale and, and Jack Grealish. So, mm. uh, do you think it's time then to probably cash in on on him and and look to the future and, and rebuild without him? Yeah, I do actually. Um, it's it's always hard, but that's part that's part of the Brentford model. It's part of the reason we we've got to where we are is the fact that we we do sell our better players for a huge amounts of money, and we replace them with you know players that cost less and end up being better or the, or the same. Um, you know, we we go through with you know with you know Neil Morpé when he went, um, Scott Hogan be before him when he went, um, Ollie Watkins when he went, Saeed Ben Rama, Andre Gray. They they all come and scored plenty of goals for us, and then you know we we sold them on. Um, and Ty Tony will be um, or be the next one. You know, we're we're honest enough to know that he's only he only came to us for that stepping stone. Um, um, and you know it's it's we we have to we have to sort of be grown up to realize that he's uh, he's gonna he's gonna bugger off so um yeah it is time um but uh you know it's it has to be a big number as well so yeah uh, you know but it will it will be i mean he's not gonna go for 20 million is he he's gonna no you know I like you said i think you're right i mean all the betting scandal and that i don't think has probably put, put no. anybody off because of the type of player he is but it if he is moving, um, where would you see him most suited? Do you reckon which which club? Well, he, he's only going to go to one of probably three or four clubs in the UK um, or in in, in England. I mean, he, he, Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham. That's 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 it really. I don't see him going anywhere else at all. Um, you know, he's he's he's. He won't. He won't be going elsewhere. You know, he's not. You know, Man City. Would he go there? You know, he's not going to go there if Haaland's still there. But you know, it's is so that they're probably out. Um, you know, it, there's there's always going to be a Saudi club coming in and, and buying. You know, um, Mo Salah or something, or he yeah. might go there. You know, he, Tony's propelled himself to to that level, I think. But I, I'm thinking, you know, Arsenal. Arsenal are desperate for for a striker, and then obviously Tottenham. You know, with, without Harry Kane, you know, he's he is the perfect. Kane replacement. He is, you know, he's he's the second best striker in in England. You know, so if Kane doesn't play for England, then Tony will. You know, he'll he'll, he'll play that role. So yeah, it's it's, it's one of them. Um, uh, so yeah, yes. Yeah. Just, just I wish it were. Yeah, I go you know, back. I wish it would just be resolved because you know we can then go out and 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 replace, which we we kind of we kind of almost have. Kevin Sharder was bought to. To, to, to be his replacement, but I know we'll talk about him a little bit later on. So I'll I'll, I'll save that. I'll save my thunder for then. Yeah. Um, do you think it? You know, your thoughts there of of you know Tony going it surprises me a little bit because obviously I know what kind of what kind of player he is. But do you reckon that's the general feel of the fan base as well that it's time to move on? I think so. Yeah. I mean, we did a really we did a really big podcast on it last week, and we had like you know. Probably one of the most listened to podcasts we've we've, we've done, and had a lot of um, uh, Brentford fans that had, uh, kind of contributed to that. Hold on, a cough. <coughs> um, and yeah, everyone was kind of on the on the same kind of realistic mindset. You know, yeah, obviously we'd we'd love for him to sign a new five year deal um, and stay with us. Yeah, that's 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 the other that's the other option. But I don't think anyone's going to put. I'm not even going to be lazy and say no one's going to bet any money on that. But <laughs> yeah, it's 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 un, it's more than unlikely. So I yeah. just, what's the point? What's the point in you know? We've 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 seen it so many times, and I, Brentford have to do that. I, I, they have to carry on doing that um, because that's the only way that we can get 100 million quid in. And then it's bright, you know, Brighton um, yourselves, ourselves. We have we have to do that. You know, yeah. And there's only. There's only probably two clubs in the world that aren't selling clubs. 
um you know so it's yeah. it's what it's what it's what we have to do so uh, yeah well t- t- touching on um like transfers and rebuilding and things like that um let's have a quick look at the guys that you've brought in during the summer is it only these three that you've signed so far uh they're the headliners yeah there's there's there's, there's a few others but um they're you know Sh- Shada, he he joined us um last january um and he uh, but it was a loan deal um right, okay. the season so that that was confirmed um so that was like 20 odd million quid for him collins again 20 odd million and fleck and i think was like 15 or something um so yeah big money uh they they all the fleck and is is kind of more under the spotlight because david raya um yeah. has been such a brilliant keeper for us for us he's you know he's, he's once in a generation he's pretty once once in a club's history good um because he's, he's such a brilliant passer of the ball um, oh yeah yeah and he's, he's 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 literally part of the way we play you know to take so he, he will be a huge loss um but again you know um got 30 million quid for a, for a goalkeeper which is you know it's it's crazy money um and we paid three million for him so it's you know it's it's part of that. it's part of the, the evolution is just we have to do that and he wanted to go so he, was, he had a season left on his contract which he wasn't going to re-sign so you know we had to we had to do um arsenal a bit of a favor really because we've helped them with their ffp they were they were up to the buffers really on their on their spending so we've kind of lent them 30 million until um, the next transfer window when they get when they when they sell someone and then we'll get the money then so it's it, it's a it's an absolute it's it's a, it's, a, it's a done deal but it's it's kind of a loan it's it's a it's a, it's, te- it's a kind of creative accountancy i'd i'd call it so uh, <laughs> um, it, get, it gets them out of an ffp fix they get the player that they want um we get the price that almost that we want um and the player um you know is signed another he signed a two-year extension with us just in case it goes pear-shaped but you know it's it's that's not it's not going to you know i, I you know our director of football said he doesn't expect to see him back ever. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I trust him. Um, in terms of uh, Collins, I believe he's the most expensive Irishman now, isn't he? Is he really? Okay, I didn't know about the most expensive Irishman. Yeah, um, he, yeah, he must be. Yeah, 20, 25, 26 million, I think we paid for him. He's he's looking really quality. He's 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 really he's really tall, um, and he's a real ball playing. He brings it out. Um, ah, right. and he he's 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 really good. I mean, Ben Me uh, is it, it has been injured so far this season. Um, ben Me was just a, just a, the best signing we ever made. I think uh, in in the you know in the defence, um, he's 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 not missed, but it's it's you know it's we we got some we got some nice selection problems at the back when when Me's fit because Collins and Me and Pinnock are, are kind of like the the rocks at the back for us. Um, so yeah it's uh it's 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 great to see him and Sharda um he's really exciting he scored an absolute cracker um against Crystal Palace yeah, yeah. Um, he got he played most of last night um and he was anonymous um which was really disappointing um so I don't I'm not sure he fancied it under the lights in uh, in Wales so uh yeah, that, that was that was disappointing. We expected to see, so, you know, get him to shine, but we're we're kind of trying to craft a winger into a number nine, which we did with Ollie Watkins. Um, so we, we're trying to kind of um, you know replicate what we did there. Um, so, but he's he's you know again super superstar um, potential, um, and and I, I think if we can get him scoring goals, that you know the price tag will be will will start to look a bit of a bargain. It still looks quite high, but. Um, you know, we've, we've seen what the window does and we've seen what the players are going for at the moment. And um, 20 million doesn't doesn't sound crazy, which no. is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of players that you've lost, who, who's gone out during the transfer window? Obviously, we've mentioned um, Raya, the, the keeper. Um, is there any other big losses in the uh, transfer Sergi Canos, which was, you know, like another player that's really been pivotal to our journey of the last sort of six or seven years um he scored the first goal in, in the prem um and you know against arsenal that brilliant friday night and he's he's a real big fan 
fans favorite he, he's you know he's, he's as i said he's really sort of been central to our our success um and he he uh um has gone to um you know, valencia so uh yes, that's his boy that was his boyhood uh team that he supported as a kid so it's his, it's his dream come true to play there um it's a bit, a bit of an odd transfer i won't go into all of it but it it, it kind of like um he, he turned down other other offers i think he andalex and i think forest um to, to to hang out to go there but you know they they haven't paid anything for him i don't think which um yeah it's not great but it's too, it's too good to give away for free but um he was too 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 central just to kind of like let it end badly so um yeah so it, it, it's sad to see him go but you know we we have to move on yeah yeah that's I mean, similar to ourselves with um jefferson lerma obviously we lost him to to palace and he's been a massive massive void to to fill in our midfield and um hopefully with the signing of tyler adams when he's fit he can sort of fill that void for us but we'll have to wait and see for that because he won't be back until after the international break um obviously with the transfer window closing um it's thursday evening isn't it is it thursday evening? Uh, friday night isn't it? Is it friday, friday night so yeah, it obviously it's... closes before our game um is, is there anybody else that's linked with you guys that you reckon you'll get through the door i'm not sure if we're going to get through the door we i mean we brennan johnson was someone we've kind of been obsessing about slightly over the last couple of years we we, we have put bids in for him for the last two or three years i think um and, and we've just not we've not got him but the, but the numbers seem to have got so big now that i just think we'll we're, you know i as a fan i want to see us walk away from that i i don't want to see us paying 50 million from a player that i i i've never i've never seen play particularly well at this level to be honest with you but um we'll see what happens there um is a is a is a couple of it's a couple of players uh abroad that we're, we're we've been linked with but uh, I'm not sure. We, we, we'll see. I mean, we we do need we do need a couple of midfielders. I think we need left back cover. Rico Henry is kind of like our only real left back. He's a, he's a brilliant one. Mm, uh, yeah. But there's there's been there's been rumours that Man United are looking at him, um, and we we probably do need a an out and out number nine as as well. So yeah, it's there's always there's always players to buy, aren't there? You know what I mean? But, <laughs> But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I'm not, you know, I'm not. So uh, I'm not expecting loads. But you never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. We've got we've got a fair amount of money. You know, th you know, three years in this division, it, it makes you kind of, you know, quite wealthy, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it certainly does help the old money from the uh, TV and all that. But mm. um, I'm hoping we get another number nine through the door um, before the window closes. But I mean, we're linked with a player at Leicester. I think is is it Dacker? His name is Leicester. yeah. Yeah, and I I don't rate him at all, so I, I hope we don't sign him. But um, mm. we just take a little break off, obviously the game for Saturday, and uh, just take a little look back at a couple of players that have played for um, both Brentford and Bournemouth. Now, I I mean normally with this, I've got quite a lot of players, but for some reason, I I can't recall many transfers between the two clubs. I mean, you might be able to uh, correct me on that, but. Um, the ones I've got is uh, Chris Meppham, um, who we've briefly mentioned. What's what's your thoughts on on Meps when he was at Brentford? Yeah, he was a real, real sort of. He, he rose through the ranks really, really like brilliantly. Um, he played alongside um, Andreas Bielend, I think, for a couple of like a couple of months, and and, and he kind of he he, he really started to shine um and yeah it was it was again when when you came in for him it, it was almost like it couldn't really refuse the money at the time it seemed to yeah. be, you know well, how much was it 10 10 million or something it was quite a lot wasn't it yeah it was between 10 and 12 million i think yeah, which yeah, like, good money experience, you know i think eddie eddie howe obviously saw something in him um that you know um uh that was right you know he, he is he on his day he's a really he's a really he's a really classy defender but um yeah he's you know we were we were gauging him in the championship so then to to do this in the in the, in the prem we were always going to be under that uh, under that much more scrutiny so um yeah got good happy memories i mean not not lots of them obviously because he wasn't once he broke into the first team he wasn't really there for very long but mm. uh 
you know you can see why we you know it was a bit of a no-brainer to sell him to be honest yeah yeah definitely i mean I don't know what his sort of memories are playing against you guys, but I mean, from my perspective, I just remember that playoff. Uh, that yeah, play of time when he got himself sent off, but the, the fair, Superman, the Superman tackle, yeah, yeah. But I mean, to be fair, I mean, he's an international, isn't he? And and you know, he, on his day, like you say, you're absolutely right. On his day, he is a superb defender, um, struggling to get into the team a little bit. I think last night might have been his first. Might have been his first appearance of the season, possibly. I can't quite remember, but he's kind of on the fringes at the minute with the, the oh, defence we've got. Um, the other guy, again, um, still part of our squad, um, hasn't actually got a squad number this season, so I think he's surplus to requirements now. But um, I think uh, I think McCondes is is a classy player. Yeah, I, I you know happy memories of Emilio as well. Um, yeah, he, he was quite a big deal when he came to us. He was, I think, he was the Danish sort of footballer of the year, or he scored the okay. most goals in the top flight when 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 we when we got him, um, and didn't quite rise to the to the heights that you know he 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 flattered to deceive sometimes, but then he was capable of scoring an absolute worldies, um, and you know the last. The last game we played at Griffin Park with a crowd was a 5 0 win over uh, Sheffield Wednesday before COVID. Um, and obviously, then obviously the, we had the lockdown, and then um, and then we you know we, we, we moved stadiums when when there was no one you know we weren't allowed to go. But he scored in that five five nil win. He scored just the most incredible goal um, out from the left wing. He just kind of unleashed this curling, dipping, wobbling strike from probably. 25 yards well outside the area to the to the you know to the to the wing and it just it was just the most incredible goal so yeah he, he was capable of scoring lots and obviously he scored in the scored in the final at Wembley as well didn't he so um you know he, he, he's, he's kind of linked with us getting promoted as well so um yeah I think he, I think it was a shame shame he went to be honest with you but again you know you came in for him and then uh, um you know, it was a, it was a, it was a decent move for him. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think he's he's had his fair share of, of time really at Bournemouth. I mean, especially in the Championship, I think we could have used him a lot more than we did um, mm. last year um, in the Premier. We got maybe a sniff of a couple of sub appearances yeah. and was loaned out again. Um, he's, he's not, he's not one thing or the other, is he? He's not, he's not an out and out striker and he's not an out and out winger. He's, he's kind of somewhere in the middle of the two. Yeah. And I, he's kind of like it's difficult. I, you could see why a manager thinks, well, why am I picking him? Because I've got he's faster on the wing and he's got better crossing, and then he's better off the, sh you know, uh, uh, you know. Um, running the line you know he's better at sort yeah. of leading the line rather um so yeah he's, he's neither one thing or the other but he what he is he's a really good footballer so you know in a in the right team he'll be you know he'll be great so he needs to be some some unorthodox setup so it did kind of work for us for a for a bit but um yeah it's, it's quite a hard one to pigeonhole really yeah, yeah, and he, I think he's in a little bit of a rut at the minute because I think he's still suffering with an injury, and like I say, he hasn't been issued a squad number, um, mm. so I don't think he's going to get a move this window unless, obviously, we release him, um, give him his contract. Um, so I don't know whether he'll be getting much football this side of January, um, but wherever he goes, I hope he, I hope he does well because, he, like I say, and like you've said, he, you know, on his day and in, in the right team, he's a, he's a quality player. Yeah, um, I can't really think of anybody else who's been transferred between the two clubs. I, oh, there's, there's bound to be loads, but you know, I mean, not, I can't, not in the recent history. No, nah, I can't think of any, of, well, since I've been watching him for like the last sort of 34 years, I can't really remember many, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. Well, uh, I want to say Denny Mundy, but I can't. I don't know if we actually play. I know he lived down in Bournemouth. Well, we, we, oh, we, Denny Mundy played for Bournemouth. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So Denny Mundy. Yeah. There's one from the past because I. That's yeah. that's from when the era I started watching him. He was playing yeah. for Bournemouth. So yeah, he, he, he was he was great for us for a for a couple of years. He's uh, what, what a top bloke as well. I think he lives in he lives in Bournemouth as well. So. Um, yeah, I think he's still around here. Yeah. 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 Ah, yeah. That's the name from the past. Last, yeah, it's bound to be. It's bound to be loads more. Yeah, there, there probably is. It's, it yeah. probably is. To be fair, 
but um yeah what a name from the past that is hmm. um well let's go back on to this week's game um and just have a couple of look at a couple of comparisons of of player um our center back uh Zabarnier, um ukrainian international um good strong player good in the air good with his feet as well to be fair what what's pinnock kind of like what what what's what's he got about his game pinnock's great he's, he's a brilliant reader of the of, of the game um his positional sense is excellent he, he rarely rarely loses anything in the air uh and um he's his ability he's got telescopic legs so he, he'll, he'll get the last ditch tackle in he doesn't he doesn't give up on anything he's he's a base and he's what a brilliant story he is you know he's he playing for Dulwich Hamlet and Forest Green and Barnsley and you know they're now in the Prem with us um he's, he's sort of really you know he he has really kind of risen through the ranks and uh yeah he's exceptional um you know I, I think it's a shame it's a shame he's chosen jamaica to be honest with you because you know not for him but for, i think for england it is um he, he, he's he's, a, he's he's class he really is but you know he's not he's not spring chicken he's one of the one of the older ones because obviously he's, he's he hasn't come straight out of an academy and straight into you know the top flight he's, he's actually sort of done his um apprenticeship elsewhere so yeah got up with, with, with we love we, we love ethan pinnock Ah, great. Yeah, I, to be fair, I didn't. This one player I didn't know too much about, so that that's quite interesting. Um, I kind of paired these two together because, as far as I was aware, um, is it Sharday? Is it? Yeah, Sorry. Kevin Sh Sh Sharda, I think it is. But yeah, everyone says Sharday. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah. It's smooth operator, etc., etc. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> It's he's yeah, he, and he is, you know, or he will be. But he wasn't last night, as I said. <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, I kind of compared these two players because he's more of a winger at the minute, isn't he? He's, he like he you said, really, he's yeah, he is trying really. to convert, but can can play in the centre as well. Yeah, yeah, quite similar to to Clivert, really. Um, yeah, possibly, yeah, yeah, Clivert, yeah. He he's obviously. I wish he was a bit more like his old man in terms of in front of goal, Ooh. but um, he he's very very tricky on the wing can play in behind the front man um which is what i kind of imagined um i'm gonna say Sade again that's wrong um <laughs> um how your number nine is at the minute yeah as i said a, a, a little while ago is we, we are we are kind of trying to convert him into that number nine um so that's just no it's no coincidence he's, he's got that number on his on his on his back so it's um it's something that they will persist with uh, because they've obviously committed a lot of money to that. So it, it has to work and it will work. Uh, but we, we create so many chances, you know, um, some people just turn their noses up when you say XG, but, you know, we, we know that creating quality chances is, is the best barometer to, to work out how well you're playing. Um, and if you create enough, you're going to score enough. And, you know, he, he will get a lot of opportunities to, 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 to get goals this year. So, uh, you know, I, I think I think we can expect really, really good things with him. Yeah, and we're kind of hoping the same with with Clive. Um, like I say, he's, he's very versatile as well. So it'll be interesting to see how these two develop over the season, to be honest, um, from, from both, both clubs' perspective. Um, another one just to have a quick look at. Um, yeah, these two. Um, another name I could never pronounce, um, this player of yours, but I mean, I've seen him play a lot of times, Bumo. yeah. Brian and Bumo, um, yeah, yeah, he really is seizing the the hole in the team that Ivan Tony's created. He's, he's really stepped up a level. Um, Tony in that interview last week for the diary of the CEO, he, he called he called Brian and Bumo, he's like his little brother. Um, and he's said he's like been helping him with his finishing and he's been certainly helping him with his penalty taking. No, obviously not at the moment, he's nowhere near the training ground, Brian, um, Tony. But <laughs> you know, it's 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 kind of what when he was with him, he he, he you know he helped him. Um so yeah, he's he's really maturing into something pretty special, if I'm honest with you. Um I, I, I'm I'm staggered that there's not been big bids for him you know i'm really staggered you know brennan johnson's worth 40 or 50 or whatever it is brian's worth double that you know he, he he's, he's been doing it he's actually he's actually got you look at his stats you know his assists his goals 
um, his dribbles. He, he he is the real deal, you know, and um, he's not he's not potential like like Johnson is. He, he, yeah. he, Brian's there now, and um, I'm just I'm just staggered that you know some you you hear huge bids going in for you know for for, for some of Brighton's players who I'm not saying they're not good, but you know the, the, some of these are every bit as good, and yeah. uh, you know it's you know 115 million quid, um, and then then you know then Bumo doesn't even get talked about so it's you know we're happy with that because like under the radar brilliant we it means he's going to stay but you know it's um it doesn't seem actually that fair <laughs> you know what i mean uh, yeah. you know but there you go you know it's like it's, it's yeah, good that. so but he, he he came on last night and he and he, and he made a big difference um yeah he's, he's he's maturing into something pretty special for sure because was he with you guys in the championship as well yeah, yeah, he's been he was, he was part of that brilliant summer that we, we where we signed, you know, so many of our players that helped us come up with, you know, Norgard and Jensen and Pim. Um uh so yeah, and, and Pinnock is and Raya. They that was part of one transfer window which was just just off the scale, you know. Yeah. So uh yeah, he's 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 been he's been here quite a while, yeah. I think he's yeah. must be he must have signed his third contract with us or second, you know um renewed it so yeah it's probably five years now he's he's obviously made the step up from from championship into the premier league and he's blossomed at the right time by the looks of it um yeah we are going to miss it when we've got the we've got the african cup of nations haven't we after uh, this yeah. january in that so he'll yeah. be off to play for cameroon um and we're going to miss Johan Wiesa as well. Um, I, I, if, if the DRC have, have qualified, but yeah, so um, it's 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 going to be a, a bit of a bit of a weird January. So so I, we I, we might have to get some faces in to, to cover for those because we we haven't got that strength in depth to cover a Tony and an Umbumo and a Wiesa, you know. So well, that's, that's a lot of players, isn't it? That's a lot yeah. of players to have out. Yeah huge in depth but i mean three goals in three games i mean that's that's a great start to the season um yes. and i wish our, our blokey at the top there mr Solanke, had that that kind of stat at the minute but i mean obviously he's only scored once and created a goal but um i think it's uh i'd love to see if a, a bit more from dom this season in, in front of goal and, and hopefully he can he can blossom a bit because he had a cracking season in the championship that year mm -hmm. Um, I think he scored over 30 goals as a season total and you know he's come in the Premier League and his his game's adapted a little bit more um, had to a little bit last season but I'm hoping this season he gets a lot more chances in in, in front of goal um, that's if uh, West Ham don't come in and, and, and try and buy him which is uh, some of the late rumours but um, uh, just one last thing before we do a, a quick score prediction Um key players and the danger men for for the game for both sides um obviously you've chosen um three that you've spoken about briefly already um that in what way will they be key to to beating bournemouth well flat as i said flecken's got big gloves to fill with with raya going to arsenal and he he, he has he did look really shaky pre-season uh, but he's actually looked really good in the game so far. So he needs to, you know, just. And there was a bit of a, a bit of hesitancy at the back that that caused the Crystal Palace equaliser. I wouldn't say it was his fault. It was just like one of those things. Two play, two players kind of left it for the other one to do to to, to clear and um, Anderson kind of nipped in and got his toe to and sort of meg, nutmeg the the keeper. So. Um, so yeah, it's important that he gets his distribution. He's 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 a, he's a great passer of the ball as well. Um, we've literally tried to replicate um, the David Raya style. He's taller than Raya, um, so we need him. He, he's critical for him to be at his strongest at the back to keep us watertight. So uh, no, no wobbles from from Mark Fleckham, please. Um, and the other two, um, well, it's just you know if, if they play if they play well, then we're gonna be really dangerous you know if we get if we get Sharda and and Mbumo on song then yeah you've got plenty to worry about so yeah. um, it's it's that's 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 it really you know we 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 will create chances but it's down to these two to score the goals you know and Wiesa as well um but um they, I, I'd say these three are kind of really pivotal 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, from our perspective, I think we're going to need these three guys um, on top form. Um, Solanke, like I've said, you know, he, he does need to start scoring some more goals. Um, but he has a lot more to his game than just goal scoring. But um, we need him on, on, on top form against you guys, especially with the defence you've got. Um, Philip... Um, previously known as Billin, but he's now known as Philip. Um, him on his day can easily be the best player in the squad. Um, so we're definitely going to need him on form, whether he's playing deeper or whether he's playing in behind Solanke, wherever he's playing, we're going to need him on, on top, top form. And Samane, um, who we bought from Bristol City back in January, uh, um, he really cemented himself in the squad and he looks a good, strong, physical player. So we're going to need him on on top form as well. I think these three are going to be very, very key into to getting any points against you guys, which um is is going to be a very, very tough, tough um game for us, whether whether you add Tony in or not, to be honest. But yeah. um let's have a little um score prediction. Um what do you think in terms of, of score line? I'm gonna go for a two 0 Brentford win actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really like how dark it's got in here as well. I should have put a light on as well. Can you actually see me? It was almost as, it was almost as dark as it was in Rodney Parade last night. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, it's a dark old little ground, that one. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the floodlights barely worked. So I, just, I, I, honestly, I honestly couldn't see. The ball went up in the air. I just, like, you lost it. I don't, I don't, <laughs> So uh, yeah, yeah, and no, that's so, yeah. Two 0 Brentford win for me. Um, I think we're gonna uh, get back to winning ways. I think you, the way that you play will suit us. Um, you're gonna be a little bit more attack minded than than Crystal Palace. Um, I think we we do well. You know, it should be a good game. You know, with yeah. two, two two really good teams, and we'll you go you'll you'll probably go toe to toe with us because that's you know so you should you know so um, yeah I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Just, your manager plays that way. Our manager plays that way, so yeah. From the fans' point of view, it should be a yeah, should be a really good. Really yeah, good from, from the neutrals' point of view, as I like mm. to normally say, because yeah. uh, from my point of view, it's going to be uh, yeah, difficult watch. I think at times, um, but I mean, I've got to back the side. I mean, we're going to concede. It's as simple as that. I mean, if we don't, if we come away um, from from your nice, lovely new stadium um, with a with a clean sheet, I'd be very, very surprised. So, but at the same time, I think on our day we can compete. Um, so I'm going to go with a, I'm going to go with a two-two draw. Okay, yeah, not a bad shout. Yeah, there's every um, point of that afternoon as well. So, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But um, just before we go, if you want to, um, did you want to tell us a little bit about the the podcast that you, that you're with? Yeah, well, besotted beso beso in in many guises has been going since 1990. So we started off oh. as. Uh, Started off as a, a an inky fanzine. Um, yeah. Did one, so we did that for. Well, I've never really officially not not give, you know actually given it up, but it's, uh, we haven't produced one for probably for ten years probably. But um, just the selling of the things a pain in the ass. So uh, yeah, so yeah, we had a yeah. We used to do video blogs as well. We used to do that every game. Um, obviously, there's a website besotted.com, and but the, you know the Twitter feed. Um, at be sorted and the, the podcast we're up to almost a thousand editions of the podcast now so uh that's 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 the way we've gone um we, we love doing them um, we do one after every game um uh, in in the stadium straight after the match getting fans um opinions about what, what they've just seen and then we do like a um you know which you kindly just sent over um your contribution this week so um we'll i'll be i'll be doing that tomorrow and piecing that together tomorrow night so uh, yeah we do like a weekly roundup as well so uh, yeah. yeah so we, we we we've uh yeah we as i said we really enjoy doing it so it's uh yeah so uh yeah come down, download a couple and um you know i'm sure you'll enjoy them <laughs> yeah I've, I've i've had a look on um on the ones you got on youtube there and, and i listened to last night um during the penalty shootout there was oh um... yeah 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 i did that yeah 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 oh right okay yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to listen to that earlier on today. But uh, did you say you've written a book as well? Yeah, I, I publish books. I must my I must my work. So I publish football books. So, uh, but oh, I, really? so mainly, um, you know, not not mainly about Brentford. But I've done a lot about Brentford, and I did a book called Brentford Revolution, 
with a guy called Tim Street last year. So he co-wrote it with me. So we interviewed all the all the players and managers since um, you know Andy Scott and then Uwe Rosler and um, oh, yeah. Dean Smith and, um, and, Tom, and Thomas Frank and Mark Warburton. So we we literally pieced the the last decade of our rise, and it really is a revolution. You think how you know what we were like. Um, you know, and what we've been used to down the decades and what we are now. So it's it's a complete transformation and it's because of Benham, really, Matthew Benham. Yeah. So it's this, you know, Benham contributed and um, uh, Rasmus Ankerson, who was director of football with with Phil Giles at the time, they both they both sat down. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's a it's, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing that. But yeah, I produce books for, for all, all football clubs. Oh, wow. Well, that's rough. That sounds like a, a bit of a dream job. That, that to be honest, but uh, especially when you get to write about about your own passion, it, you know, it must be. Must yeah, be great to do. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, it's been great to have you on. Um, yeah, thank you, mate. You, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure, and um, you know, hopefully, uh, Brentford can uh, achieve the same if not better than last season just hopefully you don't turn up saturday and you have a nightmare but other than that um <laughs> hope you fancy, have... fancy a beer on saturday we'll be in the globe um the but, globe. yeah as bournemouth fans know you know you can drink anywhere in brentford with, yeah. with your colors as long as you come and you know don't sing stupid songs and antagonize everyone yeah there's no, there's no door policies anywhere it's not like it's not like coming down to your place where it's like it's quite hard to find somewhere to oh drink. yeah yeah you no know. definitely I mean, that uh, Brent, going to Brentford was always one of my, especially when at Griffin Park, was mm -hmm. one of my favourite places to go because obviously it, it was such an old Victorian ground and you had the four pubs on the corners, didn't you? Yeah. And um, it was always one of my favourite grounds to go to um, just, just because it, it was just such a, you know, Victorian kind of ground. And when we built our new one, it kind of reminded me a little bit of our old old ground. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, been 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 to griffin park i mean plenty of times and, and obviously a new one now and um it's a lovely stadium that new one um, yeah we're really pleased with it the way it's worked yeah. out you know yeah, we've still still got a lot of love for the old girl griffin park but um you know it's uh it couldn't have worked out any better to be honest yeah and times obviously move on but yeah again anyway thank you very much for joining enjoy. us yeah enjoy see you later and, cheers okay bye-bye bye-bye